What's going on, everybody? This is Claudia and Fair. Let's talk about War Tales Advanced Brute Build Edition. So I've already gone over my Swordsman Build video, and quite frankly, let's just go ahead and hop on into the Brute Build video. First build that I'm going to be going over is one that I've already kind of elaborated on in one of my previous videos where I went over my own personal class builds, but with this one, it gets a little bit more in depth because now we have access to level 12. So welcome to Swift Justice. Swift Justice is going to be starting out with Vanguard. Followed by Vanguard, we're going to be grabbing Valorous Chain as well as Cruelty. After that, we'll be grabbing Guard Breaker because Guard Breaker will eventually let us ignore 100% of the enemy's guard and we'll really be able to punch through any armor that the enemy has. On top of that, we're grabbing Defensive Repost because it's the best in slot, in my opinion. And then we will be grabbing Class Specialization. And with Class Specialization, we'll be grabbing Overwhelming Presence. Overwhelming Presence, I have set for the level 12 slot but you could grab it at level eight if you manage to beat the drombach arena earlier on in the game because honestly it's a really 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 good specialization pick because it essentially gives you permanent crits and it also applies confused to the enemies so they can't buff themselves so long as you have you know more armor than the enemy so moving on from the actual specializations let's go ahead and get into the items for this build since we're going vanguard and valor's chain we're going to be grabbing dagan's hammer Dagan hammer in my opinion is probably my favorite two-handed hammer in the game it is very strong even post nerfs and it's just a very viable weapon dagan's hammer can be found in tiltrin's tomb of the ancients which is essentially a little bit to the southwest i believe it's west southwest uh and in the snowy mountains it's one of the first tomb of the ancients that you'll be most likely discovering and going through on dagan's hammer for this build we're going to be running misty oil as well as infectious oil the reason why we're doing this is because misty oil if you're going to be dealing a lot of damage with Dagon's Hammer, you're going to be hitting multiple people at once. Misty Oil will help you deal even more damage to everyone that you're hitting. And Infectious Oil can be triggered by Misty Oil. So Misty Oil will apply 50% splash damage, essentially, to anyone who's next to the enemies that you're hitting, which means this can bounce back and forth between enemies that are already in Dagon's art. So you can apply Misty Oil to each individual, and it will bounce to every other individual in the art, or anyone else that's outside of the arc actually within range and you're going to deal a decent amount of damage from that on top of that infectious oil basically triggers extra damage on top of the already extra damage from misty oil and misty oil can trigger infectious oil if that makes sense so there's a lot of potential damage chaining here from this build. And in order for us to really capitalize on that, we're gonna be grabbing the Misty Oil Concentrate. Misty Oil's recipe can be found in the Ludern Garusa Clan's Alchemist, and Infectious Oil can be found in the Grinmere Alchemist. And then for armor, we're gonna go ahead and run the Acadian Steel Brigandine. The best in slots going to be the Reinforced Layer of the Serpent. Of course, Reinforced Layer of the Serpent is not out there for anyone who hasn't already completed path quests and unlocked the recipe. So the best in slot for this is most likely going to be a mix of Reinforced Layer of the Rat as well as Reinforced Layer of the Stag. Reinforced Layer of the Rat can be found after completing the Vertrus Tracker Hunt, whereas the Reinforced Layer of the Stag can be found after completing the Tiltran Tracker Hunt. And overall for Swift Justice, once we hit level 12, we really don't need to be putting any extra points into Critical Hit because Overwhelming Presence will automatically give us those crits. So we're actually going to be dumping extra points into Strength as well as Movement and once we get willpower up to 15. So movement needs to be our next one followed by strength because that's going to increase our critical damage output as well. I always put in a few extra points into critical hit just to help us get to where overwhelming presence starts actually triggering. But once you're there, you're just permanently critting and it's really nice. As for professions, we are going to be grabbing woodcutter and trying to max that out because that's really going to give us the best in slot capabilities here for actual damage output. Moving on to our second build, which is called strong boy. And Strong Boy is called this because we're going to be using a lot of strength boosting items and effects. So first things first, we're going to be running Destroyer. I understand Destroyer doesn't actually min-max you for strength, but Destroyer is one of those classes that just, it's nice. It feels nice and I like it. So we're going to run it. Following up with Destroyer, we're going to be grabbing Valorous Duel as well as Cruelty. 
After Cruelty, we're going to be running Guard Breaker. And after Guard Breaker, we're going to be running Defensive Repost because, once again, it's best in slot. After that, we'll be grabbing our Class Specialization and, once again, grabbing Overwhelming Presence because Overwhelming Presence is an amazing passive. Getting into our actual items, we're going to be using Urkishet's Mace. Now, Urkishet's Mace is really strong because it basically gives you a double damage attack that's a guaranteed crit if you have more strength than the enemy unit you're attacking. This is really useful for novice and experienced players it's not as strong for expert players because well enemy stat boosts really make it to where it's hard for you to outstrength somebody so to combat that we could use a strength oil but i'm not going to in this particular instance we're going to be using exhausting oil and the braves oil so exhausting oil can be found in the drawback holberg alchemist the braves oil can be found in the grinmere alchemist and essentially what we're trying to do here is we're trying to apply dazed so enemy attack of opportunities don't work on top of that we're trying to get it to where we're generating more valor points and being a vp positive build here while still being able to essentially function as a tank our armor is is going to be uh, Acadian steel plate armor with reinforced layer of the horse. This is going to give us extra strength as well as extra guard and make us a little bit beefier. After that, we're grabbing the Peace Bears Roundel, which is going to give us that extra damage output on every attack because our guard is so much higher. After that, we're going to be using the Braves Oil Concentrate, which is going to help us trigger the Braves Oil every single ability. So no matter what, we're always going to be able to essentially generate any potential valor point that we use as well as generate more because we have a valor's duel for engaging now in order for us to really take advantage of urkashet's mace we need to make sure that we are dumping as many points into strength as we possibly can so our overall movement score is only going to be at 14 i'm not going to pump it up past that i am going to get our willpower up to at least 15 though just because that's really going to help us out later on if we ever get to the point where you know we're at zero health after that we're going to be making sure that this unit is using blacksmith because blacksmith gives pure strength and it essentially gives you an extra 10 points in strength strength at max level and we are going to be just dumping every other stat attribute point career planned into strength to really help out for additional skills i'm going to be making sure that i have basically anything because with braves oil i'll be able to just regenerate it all back at the end of the day anyway run is going to help us out with our maneuvering considering we're going to not have as much movement as our other builds as well as having taunt which will give us a damage reduction debuff for enemy units whenever we engage them we're going to be grabbing wrath because that's going to deal a little bit more damage and yeah we're we're going the whole nine yards here because essentially everything's going to be free so we might as well just max out as many of these abilities as we can on strong boy moving on from strong boy we're going to be getting into brawl and this requires the brawler subclass which once again you will unlock once you go to drawn back arena the brawler subclass lets you use thunderous blow which in and of itself isn't the best attack out there except if you use an am ambush which applies vulnerability which basically guarantees your neck tax going to be a critical hit and the ally gets a free attack of opportunity so it really does apply a little bit extra damage going there and it works as a very nice dedicated tank of course we're going to be grabbing Having Valorous Duel as well as Armor Breaker on this one. Armor Breaker is a little bit different because we're not going to be using Cruelty, but I do enjoy it as well. It could be swapped out for Cruelty for all intents and purposes of this, but I went with Armor Breaker for this example. Next up, we're going to be grabbing Rivalry. This tank is meant to basically tank, so we're going to make sure that we are able to reduce all incoming damage as much as we possibly can. After Rivalry, we'll be grabbing Defensive Repost, and then for Class Specialization, once again, the best option and slot is going to be Overwhelming Presence. And once you're done with the specializations, let's go ahead and get into the items for this. We're going to be using Hothead's Mace. Now, Hothead's Mace is just a standard rare item that you'll be able to find from Wandering Traders, as well as Tier 3 tank units from the Legion faction. So, Hothead's Mace, what exactly does it do? Well, basically, if you've already attacked once in that turn, you're going to deal 50% of the damage that Hothead's Mace attack deals directly to their health pool. So it's an additional damage of 50% directly through armor and guard. It's really strong. So we're going to go ahead and combine that with 
putrid oil, and exhausting oil. Once again, you can find the recipe for exhausting oil at the Drombach Holberg Alchemist. You can find the putrid oil recipe at the Drombach New Astol Alchemist. So the overall thought process on this is for us to engage using our special attack using Thunderous Blow. And then we're going to be applying vulnerability and then you use Hothead's Mace. And since it's not your first attack for the turn, you're going to have a crit as well as deal an extra 50% damage from the crit damage through everyone's guard and armor directly to their health points. And on top of that, you're already gonna be using putrid oil. So they're going to be taking fever because we're using the putrid oil concentrate. So your first attack's going to apply fever. So it's gonna increase your damage output by 10%. And yeah, yeah, like things start like it, it, it ping pongs back and forth and it really adds up. Moving on from the weapon, we're going to be grabbing Acadian steel plate armor and we are going to be maxing this with reinforced layer of the horse, which is going to give us extra strength and extra guard. After the armor, we're gonna be grabbing Rampart. Rampart is a special shield that you can get once you beat the Arthas Arena. Essentially what Rampart's going to do is it's going to give you tactical slam, which doesn't deal that much damage. However, uh, the damage of Rampart's ability is increased by 15% for every buff and debuff both you and your opponent have. So if you have a lot of buffs and debuffs, as does the opponent, you're going to hit really hard with this shield. And of course, we're gonna be grabbing the putrid oil concentrate because this is going to guarantee that we are applying fever stacks and increasing our damage output even further for every attack that we deal. So we'll at least have two stacks of fever on the enemy whenever we use our shield slam, which is going to be our last attack in the entire sequence. So we're able to really maximize the amount of buffs and debuffs between us and the enemy. As for stat spreads, I'm actually going to be grabbing Bard on this one because that's going to get our willpower up to a high enough point where I don't need to put any levels into it and it gives us extra constitution. This unit is meant to be a tank, so we're going to be utilizing it as a tank. As for overall critical hit, we're not going to be putting very many points into it because we have overwhelming presence. Then we're going to be making sure that we have at least 16 movement and then we're dumping the rest of the points into strength because we need to deal more damage. So let's go ahead and do that and and that's essentially going to be your overall stat spread for Brawl. And finally, we're getting into, honestly, this is more of a thematic build, but I really enjoy using it, and I call it Sludge. So Sludge ends up using the Smasher class. So Smasher, for those of you who aren't aware, utilizes Poisoned Impact. So essentially, anytime you use Poisoned Impact, which is an AoE ability on units that are already bleeding, you apply Poison and leave Poisoned Clouds on the ground upon upgrade, which is pretty strong considering the weapon we'll be using. But let's get into that a little bit later. After Smasher, of course, we're going to be grabbing Valor's Chain, so we're able to really utilize all of this AoE damage. We're going to be grabbing and cruelty and then afterwards we're going to be grabbing guard breaker followed by defensive repost and once again for our level 12 ability we're going to be using overwhelming presence and that's because overwhelming presence to me is more important than deafening roar i really don't like the bravery skill for the brute tree and i feel like it's just not that good of an ability sure it's useful but being able to really make your brutes stronger by giving them an extra level eight passive or an extra passive in general, it's not really much of a question in my opinion. Now, moving on from our specializations, let's go ahead and get on into our gear. So starting off, we're gonna be using the two-handed hammer of the guard. This is one of those weapons that you will most likely encounter by the end of your run. Anyway, it's a rare-ish item, it's a blue item, and it's a two-handed hammer. So basically you're gonna be spinning around and anytime you deal armor damage with it, you apply bleed. And this is where you're gonna be getting your source of bleed in order for you to utilize your poisoned impact. Then we're going to be applying poisonous oil to this weapon. So we're able to apply stacks of poison in general with this. Now remember, poisonous oil currently is not in the game as a recipe. However, you can find a single unit of poisonous oil if you go to Arthas and rescue the Joan of Arc scenario where a woman is getting burned at the stake. He will reward you with a single poisonous oil. Once we have poisonous oil on this, we're also going to be utilizing paralyzing oil and paralyzing oil essentially applies slowdown so you're really going to be able to kite people for basically ever paralyzing oil you'll be able to get at the ludern nerprun clan alchemist moving on from our weapon we'll be using the acadian steel brigandine best in slot layers for this is going to be reinforced layers of the serpent but once again since they're not quite in the game unless you have an early access save from before the path rework system you're going to want to use reinforced layer of the rat which you can get after 
you complete the Vertruce hunt. And then for our belt item, we're going to be using a poison vial. Poison vial you can find in random chests throughout the game. It's kind of a random spawn, so good luck finding it. But if you find it, it's going to be pretty useful because after using a skill, you have a 30% chance of applying poison to all the targets ever hit. So this pairs really well with your AOE attack. As for overall extra skills, I'm going to be making sure that I'm using Wrath. Run wouldn't be terrible, but overall, we don't need too many VP burning skills. It's always useful to have first aid just in case you need to pick somebody else up. As for overall stat spreads on Sludge, we are going to be using Miner as a profession, which gives plus seven con, plus five strength. Pretty useful overall. It gives you a little bit extra bulk for when you're in those big and tight fights. And then on top of that, we're going to be basically pumping a lot of points into movement and strength. Once again, movement, we went ahead and got that up to 18. And then for willpower, I always get that up to 15. I'm not going to put any extra points into critical hit because overwhelming presence, once again, guarantees crits once you have so much armor damage dealt. And then we're going to be maxing out strength at this point. So that really is how you're able to maximize on this effect anyway guys that is all i've got for this video a special shout out to dorum for his guide and helping me find all of these items once again and his guide is going to be linked below in the description and that's all i've got for this video if you like this content want to see more videos such as this like the video let me know what your favorite brute build is in the comments below and i hope to catch you all in you know the comment section or in my live stream chats and until next time have a good one